excited to have you with me here today. I have the cutest project that I've created for the March Madness um, challenge over at the Frilly and Funky blog. And it's not about basketball. It is about Alice in Wonderland, the quote from the book, We're All Mad Here and the Mad Hatters. So I worked with Stamparia's Alice collection and I'm just in love. When I was about eight years old, my older brother for Christmas gave me one of the illustrated classics of Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. And I can't tell you how many times I read the book and these illustrations are pulled, I think, from that edition that I had. I just love them. I've cut the collection up pretty thoroughly, but this is just a look at the images and you can get this at the Funky Junkie Boutique. So I had it in mind that I wanted to celebrate the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. As you know, I'm a tea drinker. So I thought, oh, it'd be fun to make like a little tea box. And then it just kind of evolved into this wonderful project. This is made with Graphic 45's new ATC box. And these are so stinking cute. They only measure three and a half by four and three quarters. So they're tiny, but they're darling. So I've just decorated this up very simply on the cover with some fussy cut layers from the collection, a Graphic 45 um, die cut clock, some little tiny buttons, and that's it. And then the spine, I've taken one of my vintage spoons and attached it here along with a label from the collection. I just think this is so cute. And then I made little bun feet by stacking um, bingo chips together and wrapping them with score tape and paper. And then I took two of the tags that come with the collection and joined them together with the O-ring and some charms that are just too cute for words. Look, here's the white rabbit. Here is a little teacup and here's a little teapot. And then this is um, just kind of a faux closure, but I just think it looks Look how cute it is, I can't stand it. Anyway, so this opens out. I've decorated this and the spine, and then I created a teeny tiny journal. I just, look how it fits in my hands. It is the cutest stinking thing. And this measures just, if I remember, I should remember I cut so many pages. This measures two and seven eighths inches by three and seven eighths inches to fit inside the box. And I had to keep this kind of on the plain side so that the box would hold it. But I fussy cut some cards and um, this image of the Mad Hatter from the collection, wrapped the spine with printed burlap, and then it has a ribbon closure. So we untie the ribbon and inside, I had the best time with this. I just kind of went crazy, people. So there's a little belly band with some little ATC cards that I just decorated with scraps from the collection. And I do have a tutorial for building the book base and the pages that follows um, this. So I don't get into decorating all the pages and stuff, but I do show you all of that. So one of Tim Holtz's, um, what are these called? I can't remember the thing. They cut and emboss at the same time as the Sizzix die. Lots of little die cut images. This little clip comes off. This page flips up. Here we have the white rabbit and some playing cards. I actually cut these from the cover art on the collection. And then this is my favorite thing. Ta-da! It's a pull-out page with all these beautiful teacups and images from the collection. And this is a big, long piece. So what I did to make this fit was I cut it to the correct height for the book, which is, I want to say two, three and a half inches. And then I used the 12-inch piece and just scored it every, I wrote these down, but I don't have the cheat sheet with me, every two and three eighths inches. And that gave me this wonderful pull apart. And then on this side is the reverse pattern of the paper with a little fussy cut heart, little teacups. And then these are actual tea bags from a brand of tea that we drink. And they all have a quote on the tag and I save them all because I'm a pack rat. Not really, I use what I got and just use those to decorate this. So this folds down. Here's the little pull tab, so cute. Um, then this page flips over 
and um, just a little quote from the collection, a little tuck spot made um, with a teacup, and then I've tucked tea bags into each little pocket. So there are three page units in this, and each page unit either has um, a flap page, a pocket page, and regular page, or a regular page and then a regular pages and a pocket page. So this all just gets held together. Let me get this little clip back in place because it's tiny and I don't want to lose it. And so that's the first page unit. Oh, and this is fun. On the back side, I created this little, I don't know, like envelope with magnets. Here's a little teapot cut from the cover, more of these little ATC cards, and then just a little quote. And that just has a little magnetic closure. So just a tip, don't ignore the cover art on these collections because a lot of what I've used, like the queen, these little teacups, um, this teapot, these are all cover art. And you can use every square inch of these papers. So the second page unit has this little um, label that flips open. Then there's a little book that opens and here we have the knave of hearts and this just clips back over here and let me put that clip back in place i just wanted this to be a really fun interactive lap book and then just a cute little look page pocket with a tea bag and this page has a belly band and these are just tags cut from the collection super cute king of hearts alice really cute and this is the other of um, those Tim Holtz medallions that I think they're I don't know embossolets I think maybe they're called so and a button from my stash which I think I got at Funky Junkie so um, that is the second section did I leave anything out I don't think I did oh I did I missed a whole page <laughs> Here I just kind of did the reverse of a pop-up where I creased this to go down into the spine and put this fussy cut teapot between the two pages. There, now that's everything. Over here, this is really fun. The collection comes with two bookmarks, but of course they're too tall for this little book. So I scored them, added some fussy cut um, pieces from that page, vintage buttons, and then this becomes a flip page with a fold down. Isn't that fun? So that lives here. And then take this clip off. This is a flip up page. And I made a little pocket with card inserts, die cut a doily, put a little teacup there. So that's super cute. Then, hold on, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Nope, that's everything. This opens out. Here's another double page spread with just a little metallic rusty heart. These are flat, so they work really well. A little piece of that burlap left over from the spine. More teeny tiny buttons, another tea bag, and then another fun little pull down page with a fold out. And then on the back, a belly band with a decorated ATC tag. This is the third tag that comes with these little ATC boxes. So this is just the most fun I've had in a long time. I loved making this itty bitty album. I love that it fits in the box. This is cute enough to set out on a side table kind of as home decor. I love decorated boxes anyway. So stick around. We will, um, following this, there is the tutorial for building the album base and the page units. And I will have still photos of the project for you to enjoy. So that's Alice from Stamperia. Love, love, love. I didn't buy enough. I need to go back and buy more. This is just a darling collection. And I had so much fun. I hope you enjoyed this. If so, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, come join the party. We have loads of fun here. And I'm going to get my craft on. Thanks for joining me. Bye. All right, let's um, begin this tutorial for building this little ATC sized mini album. This is such a cute little project. So the first thing you need is craft paper cut to eight and a half by five. And then some medium weight, well this is actually fairly lightweight chipboard 
Um, this is mat board actually. That is two and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then another piece that is one and a half by three and three quarters. If you go any bigger than this, it will not, I found it didn't fit in the box. So I'm just gonna start by gluing this spine down. And I wanna try to keep it straight and even at the top and the bottom. And then we're gonna glue the covers in. And you can use score tape if you like, I just like to use this glue. You want to leave a little break in between. This is about an eighth of an inch. And you know, you can always put a ruler or a, put your bone folder in there, but you have to have that for the book to be able to, the covers to be able to open easily. If you leave too much space, it'll be floppy, and if you don't leave enough, it will crack when you try to open it. So we're a little wider here than we are there, but I'm not gonna worry about that. No one's ever gonna know. Then I use this um, really thin packaging tape. And I don't know what the name of it is, but it's like a super thin plastic. And it's really strong, but really thin, so it doesn't add bulk. And I just wanna put that on either side of the spine to kind of strengthen that spine. And I'm gonna press it right down in and then burnish it down. And of course you wanna trim this up. And it doesn't matter, you can make it neat and tidy if you want to, but no one's ever going to see this. So I just get it down there. The main thing is that it's in that spine and it acts as another layer. You could use clear also, but it has to be this really thin tape. And I don't know, maybe you could use washi tape. I've never tried washi tape. This stuff really sticks, which is why I use it. Um, it's also really cheap. So, um, but strong. So again, I'm just gonna take my bone folder and push that down in there. Burnish this down, get any air bubbles out. And the next step is we're just gonna fold this paper gently. And you don't wanna do this too um, quickly because that paper, the fibers in the paper need a chance to stretch. And if you're too in too much of a hurry, um, you're gonna break those fibers and then the paper will crack. So I just kind of bend it, bend it, bend it. Give it a chance to stretch. It's just like a muscle. Um, you know, if you too abrupt with your muscles, you'll tear them. Same thing with paper. So burnish that all down, then come into the sides. Same thing, just take your time, take your time. And on this side as well. So then come in with scissors and you want to trim away these corners. And everybody does this a little bit differently. There's a lot of ways to do it. This is how I do mine. Um, I just like to bevel them or miter them, whatever you want to call it. Because then we got a nice, neat fold. And because this is non-porous, I do use half-inch score tape along here. Um, liquid adhesive will eventually set, but it, it takes too long. 
So I do use half inch score tape along here. Peel the top and bottom off. And you always want to burnish score tape down before you try to peel off the liner. That helps it seal to the surface. away. And um, do the flat parts first. And again, get in and crease that spine. You're going to crease and recrease. There's a lot of um, using a bone folder with this. And if you don't have a bone folder, you can use a ruler. But a bone folder is so cheap and it's such a great tool. And if you're going to do any kind of book building at all, you really need to have them in your stash. So I added just a little bit of adhesive to these corners. And now I'm just going to fold this over. Burnish that down. work that corner a little bit it got a little I cut a little close right there but I think we're gonna be fine okay so now you have this now again you're gonna just gently fold this in on itself burnish along the spine and there's the cover build. So not hard. And you can cut your covers to any size. Just add a half to three quarters of an inch to the um, total width to cover your book. So now we need to add the spine. And for this, I have a piece of seven and a half by three and a half craft paper. And I put this on my scoring tool, and I'll just do this with you so you can see it done. And I scored, make sure we frame, okay, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six. So basically you have three score lines for each page and our little book is gonna have three pages and then an inch and a half flap on either side. And then what I do is I just go along those score lines and I kind of pinch them in and up and to each side. And this forms little tabs that um, we will attach our pages to. And you can see I'm a little long on this side. It's okay, I'm not worried about it. Half inch score tape. So I have on the first one, then I skip two, the second one I skip two, the third one. And you're just gonna peel this off after you've burnished it, which I already had. And we'll just do these one at a time. You're just gonna repeat pinching that together. And that's gonna hold that tab in place. And I went with an inch and a half spine because of the size of the box. Um, I didn't want it to be too deep. So now we've got this little um, mechanism. And again, because of this plastic tape, I'm going to cover the entire surface with half inch score tape.
So now this is what we have. And I'm gonna trim off these extra little sloppy bits. And this is where these Tim Holtz non-stick scissors earn their keep. All right, so I'm going to remove the score tape that covers the spine first, the tabs. And I'm gonna bring my little book in and I'm gonna center this as well as I can, keeping it as straight as I can. You see that? And then I'm gonna burnish these down. And take off the rest of the tape. And it's just, the reason I do that is that if I um, don't get it placed quite properly, it's easier to lift three pieces than it is to lift all the pieces. So burnish this down. Find that spine, and again, press down into that spine. That's just gonna make the book fold more easily, and just repeat this process on the other side. There you have it. Then you're going to, again, just gently, gently, gently take your time. Fold this. Brush that a little bit. I have a little bit of cracking right there on that seam, but we will cover that with a wrapped spine so it won't really matter. See how that cracked? I should have taken it a little more slowly, but I'm doing a tutorial so I was trying to hurry it. Don't hurry it. So now look, here's our little book. Here's our book box. It fits in as neat as a glove. So you can do a dimensional cover here and um, it will fit. Now I want to show you how to do the pages. And the pages are actually page units. And you're going to cut your pages for this particular um, mini album to five by seven and a quarter. And there is a formula for this. I want my inside pages two and a half by three and five eighths. That way it's going to fit over the little tabs. It's just a little bit taller, but it's still going to be down inside the spine. So I, once I've cut my paper to five by seven and a quarter, I scored it on the short side at two and a half, and then I folded it and kind of pinched it and scored along that line. So I'll just show you this with this one. So here we are, two and a half is the easy one, and then I just kind of fold it, make sure my corners are meeting, pinch, place that on the board, and then I score where that little pinch mark is, and burnish it in both directions. And for the flap page, hold on, I have to think a minute. <laughs> it's so funny, you do this and you don't even think about it, but when you're trying to tell someone else how to do it. For the flap page, you want to make a horizontal cut 
on this line to the axis. So just like this. Sorry, this is a straight page. This is a turn page. Then this in the middle will be a pocket page where you can tuck a little something in and then another straight page. And then this part here, you're going to adhere these pages together. And we'll just do that very quickly. I usually use score tape for this, but just a really thin bead of adhesive. Press those together. And of course, this adhesive hasn't set up but then this will fit over the tab. You see how that works? And you'll add adhesive to the tab and this becomes your page. So you have a flip page, a pocket page, and a flip page. To make a flap page, again, you're just gonna score at two and a half. Fold and pinch. Line that pinch mark up and fold. In both directions. This time to do the flap, you're going to cut from the bottom to the center. And I use, usually use a cutting tool for this because it's hard for me to cut perfectly straight. But we'll just give this a whack and see what happens. With these small pages, it's pretty easy. The larger the page gets, the trickier it is. So now this folds in half, folds in half again. Here's a flap page, um, then a turn page, and then your pocket page this time is at the back. Put your adhesive down. And then this will also, where'd my book go? Fit neatly over the tab. So you have a flap page, a turn page, and a pocket page. So that's how you make the base of the book and the inside pages. And it's up to you to decorate it however you see fit. I will give you the, um, a cutting guide for cutting the pieces for the ATC box and the elements of the ATC book. But these are so fun to make. They make adorable, just adorable little projects. And um, all you need to add is your imagination. So thank you for joining me. Hang on, there will be still shots of the finished project and um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you join me in the journey. I have a lot of fun sharing ideas and tips and tricks and techniques. So thank you so much. I'm going to go get my craft on. Bye.